How fast can I explain the basics of linear algebra? We're about to find out. So let's say we have a problem like this, where we're trying to determine if vector C, which is right here, is in the span of vectors A and B. And by the way, this is how we write vectors in linear algebra. Now, what this is, question is asking is it's asking if there's some constant we can multiply by vector A plus some constant multiplied by vector B, which will give us vector C. So in order to do this, there are actually a couple ways you can do it. You might be able to just eyeball this and look and figure out which two constants we need. But I'm going to show you the more formal way of the linear algebra, which is setting up a matrix. Now, what I'm going to do for this matrix is I'm going to take vectors A and B, and I'm going to put it on one side of the matrix. And I'm going to do an augmented matrix with vector C on this right side here. So this is what our matrix looks like right here. Now, there are three rules when dealing with a matrix. You can scale any row that you want you can add or combine any two rows, and you can swap rows. So those are the three rules that you have to follow when dealing with a matrix. So what I'm trying to end up with is what's called reduced row echelon form, and then this will give us the two solutions for C1 and C2. So let's see if we can get this into that format. So what I'm gonna start by doing is I'm gonna take each of the rows, row one and two, and I'm gonna scale each of them. Row, row one, I'm gonna scale by negative three, and row two, I'm gonna scale by positive two. When I do this, I should get this matrix right here. Now what I'm gonna do is take row one and add it to row two. Whenever you're adding two rows, this number will not change not this number, this row I mean will not change, but this row will. So row one plus row two, row one is not gonna change and row two is just gonna be this combination. So negative six plus six, that gave us this zero. 18 plus eight, that gave us this 26 and then six plus 20 gave us this 26. So now that we have this, I'm gonna go ahead and scale the bottom row, row two by one twenty-sixth. That's gonna give me ones on the bottom row, which is gonna be easier to deal with. Now I wanna get a zero up here. So the way I'm gonna do that is by taking row two, scaling it by negative 18 and adding it to row one. Now since this row, we're adding to this row, Row two is not gonna change, but row one is. So if I do this step, I should get this matrix right here. Notice that negative 18 times zero plus negative six is still negative six. Negative 18 times one plus 18 will give you this zero, and then negative 18 times one plus six is gonna give you negative 12. So hopefully that makes sense. Now the last step I'm gonna do is take row one and scale it by negative one sixth. That is gonna give me this matrix. I now have reduced row echelon form and I have my two solutions. So let's see if these two solutions work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take C1 and C2 and plug it into this combination. I'm now gonna take the two vectors and scale them by the corresponding constants and then add the components together. When I do that, I should get negative two and 10. And notice here that the two vectors match. That means that we are in the span of A and B. So vector C is a linear combination of A and B and therefore is in the span of A and B. Now, before finishing off this video, I do want to show you a couple of situations. This is a scenario where you would have no solutions, and this is a scenario where you would have infinitely many solutions. So if we have zeros on the left side of the, the augmented matrix, but then some sort of number shows up on the right side, that means we have no solution. And if we have a fully zeroed out row like this, that means we have infinitely many solutions. That was a basic introduction to linear algebra.